Welcome back to Tacoma. We've just visited Botany. Let's go check out Medical. Oh, if you're feeling sick, take some pills and stuff and you'll be happy. Captured, oh, two days ago. I think that's the most recent recording I've ever seen. Interesting. Welcome to medical. Please proceed to the exam room for your appointment. Medding physician, Sarah. Text down below said it cared for them. Okay, Sarah. We'll see you over in Mech. As soon as everything's wrapped up here. All right. Good speed. Once more into the breach. What? I don't know. I, I'm just thinking about how Evie and Clive are already in deep freeze. Did you read the message they sent? Yeah. Why are we going into the supply closet? I got to talk to them a little bit right before Sarah took them down to cryo, and Evie was being so encouraging. They're putting all their faith in us, but... But what? Right before they turned to go, just for a second, they looked so worried. Oh, baby. The clock is ticking, and I just keep thinking, what if the last time they saw each other is the last time they'll ever see each other? Don't think about that. How can I? How can you not think about it? <sighs> so, you know the concept of partitioning from early century computing? Yeah, I think so. So, you have a day to drive. Maybe one partition was your operating system, and the other one was, like, general data storage. And maybe you'd partition part of the drive off to contain something that might be unstable, that you otherwise kind of, you know, wanted not to interfere with anything else. There are certain things that are gonna help us get this done, but some things... they need to be partitioned off. Because thinking about them isn't gonna help us. But... You're thinking about us, at least, aren't you? Yeah. And when I do let myself start thinking about how there's a possibility this is the last of our time together, too. Nah. Then I start thinking we should really make the most of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what else there is. Okay, sir. All right, good speed. Oh, Odin, did I do the right thing? In what regard? Does Nat deserve to know what her odds are if she ends up going into cryo? I believe that you have made a decision with both Roberta and Natalie's best interests at heart. Above all, do no harm. If we do make it out of this thing, Nat's going to have to find out I didn't tell her everything at some point. I believe that is a bridge to be crossed at a later date. Andrew is here for his exam. Oh. Uh. Send him in. So you showed up for your exam? I did. So, does that mean you've decided to... What's gonna happen to us, Sarah? What? Um... Well, Bert and Nat are going to fix up the drone with life support, and, and then we're... No. I mean... What if things don't work out? And we're still stuck in cryo? <sighs> oh. Well, when you go into stabilizing sleep, it feels just like any other sleep, really. The body effectively goes into a controlled hypothermic coma. Do you dream? Sometimes. Sometimes very intense dreams. And then what? After a certain amount of time, your body slows down too much, things start shutting down, don't wake back up. It, uh... It doesn't hurt. No. <sighs> do you think Bert and Nat can get it done? I do. Then I'll just have to trust your professional opinion and 
do my part. It's been good working with you, Doc. I'm ready for my exam. <laughs> they heard Nad jumping on uh, Bert. Okay, so yeah, that's all of them to look at as far as the, as far as their movements and everything, because Evie and Clive are already in stasis. So let's take a look at the files now. Once. Message with Odin: Isn't having more data available to the pilot desirable? Yeah, but the raw nav data is formatted for the Zenith's um, AI's use, not something something. Bert's going to need to be able to use this stuff in real time while she's at the controls, so... Uh, navigation code itself interpret the data and display its recommendation for optimal manual inputs to the pilot. Expose the raw data for cross-reference if needed. Yes. I understand. I will prepare revision 2.212 of the manual drone navigation control software. Ah, so Odin was helping that do some programming, I guess. Emergency and effect cryogenic facilities active. <laughs> I hate these freaking smileys. Happy face, cryogenic facilities active. And then not so happy face, oxygen supply approximately 50 hours. Two of six cryopods occupied. Message with Evie St. James. No, it's okay. Don't worry about... Um, but I just wanted to say, I think you're a really good station admin, and no matter how I acted, I want you to know... Something, something. Not going to let you down. That's very sweet, Nat. I appreciate it. I need to... something. See you on the other side. Let's take a look at Sarah. To all crew, Tacoma's remaining crew or whatever, uh, to everyone left awake on Tacoma Station, I've added a tracking widget to all crew desktops. It displays a pretty accurate estimate of how much breathable air remains on the station. Following the algae bloom and Evie and Clive going into cryo, that counter should give you a pretty good something something. Keep an eye on it. Message with Nat. Hey ladies, your scans look good. You're cleared for cryo. If, God forbid, something something into the pods, attaching same standard instructions I sent along to Evie and Clive. Cryogenic sleep, a patient's guide. Alright, let's take a look at this. In the case of a medical emergency, when surgical or other required medical facilities, do, 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 temporary cryogenic suspension until you can be transported for treatment, here's a quick look at uh, preparation. Medical staff will scan you and determine an appropriate regimen of fluids to be administered intravenously. Something like something, dosage of diuretics and laxatives and given time for your body to react to them before. Uh, medical staff will guide you as you enter the cryogenic device. If the cryogenic facilities at your location are in microgravity, medical staff will have special training. Alright, and then we have Andrew. To Nicholas, love you both. Dear Mark and Nicholas, I don't know how to say this, but... Uh, accident on the station, and if you're reading this, we weren't able to survive it. And I'm sorry. Nicholas, I'm sorry I won't be there to see you grow up, to be the amazing man I already see you becoming. Mark, I'm sorry I won't be there to hold your hand as we grow old together. But, something something, don't forget me, know that I loved you more than I'm sorry. Uh, more than... I'm sorry, Odin, I can't do this right now. I'll finish this later. Stop dictation. Messaging with Bert. The drone was never meant to support human life. There's no air supply system, no onboard controls at all. There's not enough radiation shielding for human passengers. 
and I'm just going to have to figure out where to scavenge all that stuff from Tacoma in a way that won't break the station. And hope that I can retrofit the drone to support human life long enough for me to manually pilot the six of us from Tacoma to the moon. So I really need to get back to it, sorry. Thanks for buying us a few more hours of oxygen with that algae thing, Andrew. Oh, you know what I just realized? Remember when I first entered the station and there's like some particle board kind of stuff holding up or like cordoning off one section and it looked like some of the floor paneling was replaced with like duct tape and stuff? That's probably Bert scavenging components from Tacoma. From Evie St. James, prepping for cryo. Dear crew, I would rather not be writing this. Clive and I, something, something. Not why I wish I weren't signing these words. Uh, it is because, above all, I believe in this crew, and I wish I could be there to see you succeed in this. We have the right people to make our plan a reality. We will breathe fresh air again. We will see our families again. We will feel the Earth's pull again, together. For now, Clive and I will do our part and settle into cryo. Soon Andrew will join us. Sarah, Bert, and Nass. We're all counting on you. Couldn't be in better hands. With love and gratitude, Evie St. James and Clive. Andrew, something something information you requested. This is from Odin. While Ventura strives to ensure the safety of each of its contractors, occasionally accidents do happen. In the case that a contractor dies... Oh god, looking into what would happen if he died. Transport of remains and funeral arrangements are paid for by Venturus. Uh, something, loyalty, and any additional Venturus accident insurance the contractor has invested in are immediately transferred to the contractor's specified beneficiary. Compound loyalty continues to accrue. Stay safe up there, blah blah blah. It's everyone's job to keep contractors and employees safe. Okay, that's it for files. <laughs> Where to start looking first? What do we have? Fantastic view, for one. Personal quarters, medical storage, and exam. Um, let's check out the exam room. Physician office hours. Imaging, lav- oh, I thought that was a lavatory. What the hell? Okay. I see Sarah's got some skeletons in their closet. Take a look at the medical office. Oh, that's the picture that they had up on their AR thing when they were trying to calm down from a panic attack with Odin. Chapstick, mint rose, felt writer. Ooh, supply locker. Um, just put that on the ground for now. Do not crush or chew. Wait, so what are these? Anti-anxiety support. Is that my favorite brand? Nailed it. Deepness in the sky. Did it? Oh, it turned off again. It's weird. It's like every time I restart the game. 
the uh, in-world overlay thing disables. I'm not sure why. February 20th. Honestly, most of the pain has faded, but I can't say that I don't still feel guilty. It's just duller than it used to be, but it's still there all the time. Odin says this counts as grief, even though I never knew the patient when he was alive. I don't know how doctors deal with this. A lot of them have to, don't they? Most of them? Huh. Never knew the patient when they were alive. Who are they talking about, I wonder? Oh. I've got to pick this up and disable that to turn it off. John Hopkins. What have you been reading? William Carlos Williams? Is her name seriously William Carlos Williams? Story of... Al... Car... I can't pronounce that, I'm sorry. University. Expedition. A Deepness in the Sky. Principles of Eternal Internal Medicine. Nutrition for Fitness. Nutritional science. Security rating med two. Bioscan record pin updated. Contractor Hasmati, thank you for updating your crew AR Bioscan records access code. Please enter a code reminder phrase for your future reference. Graduation. Hmm, sounds like something I can use, perhaps. Just not sure where. From Ventura's Confidential Communications Department Renewal Options. We would like to remind you that while your posting contract on Lunar Transfer Station Tacoma is currently up for renewal, uh, there would be many more posting options open to you if you were to accept personal responsibility for the incident of September 2nd, 2085 upon the Fountain of Paradise. As you know, the court case has been settled, so there would be no further negative impact on you and your opportunities within Vichuris would be significantly improved. Huh. I guess that must be what the letter's about, huh? Some sort of an... incident? There was a court case. So apparently it's been settled. What the hell? That is so creepy, though. Venturis requires them to... take responsibility. That's... creepy. I never knew the patient when he was alive. Huh. Wonder what happened exactly. So yeah, also, once again, it seems like Sarah is here sort of because it was their last option. I'm guessing they didn't get many better opportunities because of the incident and their refusal to accept personal responsibility for it. the earth. You know, it just occurred to me, they were wondering how long it's going to be till... I forgot what they said. Till something, Eevee or something? No, not Eevee. Some name for a ship that's going to come at some point, right? To check on them because of a lack of communications? Am I that ship? And it was three days ago. So that's 72 hours. Mm -hmm. 
That's a bit disturbing. Yeah, I am that ship, aren't I? Huh. I guess we didn't come in time. Because we either escaped or... They're in cryo or something. I mean, when I first came here, though, it said that the crew had been evacuated. But who's to say they're actually telling the truth, huh? Crew of Lunar Transfer Station to come evacuated. Yep, yeah, just says they're evacuated. Floppy glove. <laughs> well, no, I can't put it back. Glove box? By that, I mean box of gloves. Yep. Ooh. Recent body scan records. That, I would like to take a look at. Oh, that's a creepy skeleton closet. Kitty cat! House cat. I still want to know its name. <laughs> God, I hope the cat made it out too. So let's see, was the cat just sleeping the whole time? Good cat. Sleepy cat. AR bio scan procedure. Please remove any items from your pockets. No need to fully disrobe. Lie down on the scanning bed and relax. Please remain still during the scan. It should only take a moment. Facility medical staff will have your results immediately. What's that? Hmm? No, it's just chapstick. I thought I'd found a secret or something. Ah, <gasps> coin, yes. Beautiful sounds. Looks like they were doing an eye exam. Oh. Gah. Ugh. Alright, what's going on here? A creepy anatomical model you. I feel like we've had some quality alone time. Wait. Did I? Did I see this part? Oh, I did, yeah. Matthew, Doc. I'm ready for. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, that's it for the exam facilities. Uh, we have the key. I should probably take that. For a supply locker. Which must be in medical storage. Oh. What the? What did that? I guess that thing kind of like fell off. It still works though? Maybe it's remote. Huh. <laughs> I'm in at the perfect time. <laughs> I 
Aha! I know where you go. Ah! Sorry. Come here. There's probably achievements for this stuff or something. There you go. I'll leave you in peace. New York Times, Sunday, September 15th, 2086. Ventura settles with family of spaceport victim. Following a lengthy independent investigation and court case, the Ventures Corporation has reached a settlement with the family of Jaden Jeremiah Pratt, who died during surgery for a fractured femur following an accident aboard Ventures' Fountain of Paradise spaceport on September 2nd, 2085. Okay, so this is what happened with Sarah at the incident. The value of the settlement was undisclosed. As part of the settlement's terms, Ventures admitted no wrongdoing in the death of Mr. Pratt. However, significant public relations damage was already done by the incident. While OSEP's independent investigation was inconclusive, the attending surgeon at the time of Mr. Pratt's death, Dr. Sarah Hasmati, testified during multiple hearings that fault lay not in human error, but in the faulty judgment of Ventura's medical AI, HECA. Following these claims and the lack of refutation by OSEP's investigation, investor confidence in the reliability of Ventura's AI offerings declined sharply and hasn't fully recovered since. Dr. Hasmati was transferred off of the Fountain of Paradise spaceport shortly after the hearings began. Mr. Pratt was a popular travel and food writer, bringing his death and the subsequent hearings surrounding it added attention from the public. Both the Ventures Corporation and Mr. Pratt family declined to comment for this story. Yep, so not surprisingly, Ventures are assholes and Sarah... Well, they tried to get Sarah to take the fall for it. Good for them that they never did take responsibility for it, because it wasn't their fault. What's this? Don't know. Oxycodone. It's a pain reliever. Metabolic resuscitation. Excuse me. Don't mind me. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me. Did did Bert's hat fly off during this? Is that from this right here? I mean, I guess we couldn't see it, huh? Uh, I think it stands to reason it probably did. When I start thinking we should really make the most of it. <laughs> Just lots of supplies. Let's check out personal quarters. from three months ago.
just relaxing after a workout. Sarah post workout playlist three. Man, all sorts of fitness stuff in here. Weights and I don't know, it looks like some sort of exercise thing, yoga mat. And personal AR yoga instructor. <laughs> Shows you different positions. Downward dog. Warrior two. Crow pose side split. Whoa, that looks really hard. My god. Scorpion pose. Actually, before I read anything, I actually want to see what they had. What were they looking at the whole time? What do they have in their AR? J oh. Oh, that's so depressing. They were looking at... Um, Pratt's... Social media of some sort. That's now maintained in memory of Pratt. Man, she really just couldn't stop thinking about it. It's tearing her apart. Singapore, home of the ultimate hangover food. That looks delicious, although what a waste to just cut off the crust. Celebrating my last night on terra firma for a while. On my way up, never thought I'd see the earth from this height. Three years ago. With Odin. Unfortunately, the information you've requested is defined as classified by Venturis, so I am unable to transmit it to you. I wish I could. I'm sorry, Sarah. It's okay, you don't have to apologize. I know you have your rules you have to follow. I wonder if Nat could get at it. I cannot prevent you from approaching Natalie about this issue. I can advise you that doing so would violate the terms of her security clearance. Hmm. Undoubtedly something about Pratt and the incident. Egg a day odyssey to the stars, day 28, spaceport city, Singapore. Ah, uh, I guess that's the last thing they wrote, probably. Excited to take my first ever trip up the space elevator to the Fountain of Paradise tomorrow. The glitz, the glamour, the zero-g, it's going to be incredible. And all thanks to you, my loyal supporters. But first, I spend a day in the hustle and bustle of Spaceport City. The lively jumble of improvised bungalows, grey market vendors, and of course, those famous Singaporean food stalls that surround the space elevator's spectacular base tower. One last egg a day before I lift off from terra firma. Here we go. Kaya Toast at Kaya Best Kopi House. While Toast takes the center stage in this classic Singaporean street food's name, the real star of the show is the pair of perfectly runny, half-boiled eggs drizzled with... something something... Oh. What's this? Thank you again to all my eggheads who have flagged me in their loyalty affiliate programs this month. Flag me today to join up and receive premium content like this day one every week. Loyalty Affiliate Programs. Ugh. I love being loyal to hashtag brands. Message with Nat, no on another facility. Uh, like if she was malfunctioning or if there had been anything wrong with her that people might not have known about. I could try looking in VT's tech error ticket backlog for any hits. Okay, found a Paradise Medical AI about three years ago. Yep, looking into it. Good. I wonder if they found anything, so when was that again? Well, this was this whole thing was captured three months ago, so yeah, definitely Nat could have found something in that time. Let's 
go somewhere with more light. That didn't help. Is it is it just always gonna be this dark? That's a little better. Dear Sarah, we are thinking of you during this Ramadan and I hope you are celebrating in your own way up there as well. May these help you break your fast. We look forward to your next visit. Please give yourself permission to relax every once in a while during your posting. We love you, Mom and Dad. Okay, I already looked in there. Let's take a look in the desk. New translation. Uh, the Book of Changes. Unlock the wisdom of the I Ching. Many subtle forces swirl around us in our daily lives, but with the help of the I Ching, they can be understood and even turned to your advantage. The more you learn about the Oracle, the more intriguing the system for understanding. Girdre Zhu has spent more than a decade studying the wisdom of the I Ching. Her new translation is fresh while retaining the weight and authority of the original text. Her commentary gives invaluable insight. Number five, Sue, or Sue. Deep waters in the heavens, thunder clouds approaching from the west, but no rain yet. The superior person nourishes himself and remains of good cheer to condition himself for the moment of truth. Great success if you sincerely keep to your course. You may cross to the far shore. Changing line one, hex 48, the well. I have no idea what pretty much any of that meant. Related to this book, perhaps? Hi, Sarah. So glad somebody wanted uh, one of these beautiful orchids. Remember, not too much water, and just ask if you need guidance on upkeep, plant care tips. I'm here to help. Andrew. Yeah, I was wondering when I'd see one of these orchids. It's still looking good. Okay, that, 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 uh, everything but this. Is it like... No, that's already open. It's just surprisingly dark in here. Oh, those look delicious. Candies. I mean, I imagine they were delicious. Obviously, they're not there anymore. But all candies are delicious. Nailed it. Blue-green remembered. Of moisturizing lotion. A mindful life and autobiography. The AI in charge of all operations for Kiribati Sea City State Fond has lived for a long and storied span. Here she shares some of her techniques for gracefully navigating sentience and the demands of living a satisfying, socially meaningful life. Fand has been in operation for 62 continuous years, 34 of them for Kiribati Sea City State. Fand invented the celebrated sea farming techniques that bear her name, placing her at the visionary forefront of the state of the art. She's also known for her strong belief in meditation, which many experts thought meaningless or impossible for AI. Fand has been anointed Dame Controller of Kiribati, but she has elected to exclude this title from her name. <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah, wasn't it Anne, like back at the very beginning, when they were prepping for the party, I think? Um, Andrew and Clive, they're decorating the cake or something, weren't they talking about 
obsolescence day and uh, talking about AIs. I think it was maybe Clive? No, or maybe, no, I think it was Andrew. I was saying, like, isn't it, uh, I always thought, like, obsolescence day was just, I don't know, replacing an AI or something like that, but then I think it was Clive that pitched in with, they don't really do that. AIs are kind of living things that grow and adapt and all of that, and this really adds to that. It's been in operation for 62 continuous years. It apparently likes meditation. It's sentient. I mean, that's amazing. I wonder about Odin, huh? Maybe Odin. Odin was sentient too. Oh, I didn't look at this. In the name of God, the gracious, the merciful. Oh, you can read that if you want to. I'm a little bit worried that I haven't found the password to the AR scans in the examination room. I was expecting to find it. Ah, oh, right, so this gives you the hint on how to find it. Bioscan record pin updated, so the reminder phrase for the password is graduation. Which would appear to be 2080. Let's go try that. Aha! Recent body scan records. Uh, let's take a look. Alright. Take a look at Bert. Okay, 20 years old, height, etc, etc. See anything interesting? Cryogenic stasis risk factors, none. Stasis viability analysis. Patient exhibits no physical symptoms and might lead to injury or death following cryogenic stasis or revival. Physician should proceed with cryogenic procedures as appropriate. Lots of smiley faces. <laughs> Alright, nap. Oh, some, something's wrong. 24 years old. A heart murmur, probable mitral stenosis. Patient exhibits clear signs of cardiovascular abnormality, heart murmur. This condition represents severe risk of death during the cryogenic revival process. Expected probability of survival for the patient under this treatment is 18%. Patient is not recommended for cryogenic stasis. Physician should consider alternative methods of treatment for this patient. Oof. Well, I hope they did get off, because if they managed to get off, then thankfully Nat would not have to be put into cryogenic sleep. What about Andrew? Oh, that all looks good. 42 years old. Yeah, all, all clear. Alright, well, I think we're done here. Let's see if the AI extraction is complete. It is. Luckily, even with the attempted data wipe, Odin appears to be mentally intact, just dormant. We're close to having a full picture of the data structure. Even with the attempted data wipe. So Odin attempt or somebody attempted to wipe the data. Um... It looks like someone tried to wipe all the AR crew records from the station, but a few couldn't be deleted. System shows the ones left behind were being accessed at the time of the wipe. Huh. Proceed immediately to the engineering module. Once AI data is transferred from all modules, you must also secure and return the AI's physical processing medium. The latter requirement is of the highest priority.
There's cryogenics around there. Can I see anything through the crack? Looks like three pods per side. Makes sense with six people. Still access denied. Alright, before I move on, I want to grab this adorable sanitation drone again. Look at it spritzing. I want to pet you. But I can't. Oh, wrong way. Yeah. Uh, observation, personnel. Cryogenics, engineering. Yes, Odin. Almost there. Be careful with that Odin brain. It has more mental processing power than Luxembourg. Seriously, though. Don't drop it. This is H again. Okay, bye. <laughs> Network technology, mechanical engineering. Alright, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end this episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.